here we go. Uh, so in our regular empathy circle support, facilitator support group, we come together, everyone gets 15 minutes to share a, a project that they're working on and, he, and get any support with how to facilitate an empathy circle. Uh, but this one, we're going to spend maybe the first part of it in uh, looking at the, an introduction to the uh, to the uh, XR Empathy Circle work group. So get a, a bit of an overview of it. I created a, a slideshow just to sh and sort of testing it. It's a little rough. So it's a, it's a sort of an intro for the people who have joined the Empathy Circle work group and uh, the XR Empathy Circle work group. And then we're gonna just kind of brainstorm a little bit about that group. You know, what are some steps we can take to, you know, develop it and expand on it. And then uh, we'll just have a little brainstorming around that and answer any questions that anyone has. And then the second part will go into, uh, you know, a couple of people can take 15 minutes to share any kind of a topic that they would like. Uh, so with that, uh, we, maybe we can start with introductions. Uh, I'm Edwin Rutsch uh, with the Empathy Circle Work Group. Uh, maybe where you're located, which is I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area and also part of the local XR uh, group here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Would you go around and call on people, Bill, just to move fit fast? Sure. Um, Grace, could you do an introduction, please? Sure, I will. Um, I'm Grace, I'm in Southern California. I feel like I'm in the deep end, I have no idea what's going on. Okay. I've never done an empathy circle, so I wonder if I ought to come back into the baby pool, the waiting pool, and the uh, first future, future point. Because I don't know what you guys are doing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can check it out. It's, uh, we're, we're not going to be doing an empathy circle itself. We're, we'll be just kind of talking about it. So, Talking about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll hang up for a while. Yeah, great. Yay. <laughs> mm. Okay. James? James, I'm in New York. I'm unaffiliated. Carolina? Mm. My name is Carolina. I'm calling from Poland, Central Europe. I am a member of Local XR Group. I am also a member of Empathy Circle Team. And lately, for the last few months, I am a member of uh, International Support Team Regenerative Culture Work Group, too. That's me. Okay. Uh, ben? recently joined the XR group in Sheffield, where I live. Um, I've been to the first meeting, which was sort of an introduction meeting. Um, so I'm, I'm relatively new to this particular group. Okay. Um, all right, I guess. Um, my name is Bill Filler. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, Empathy Tent team. I'm also uh, taking the XR facilitator training. I'm based in the San Francisco Bay Area um, near Edwin and Edwin. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and Grace, are you part of the XR? Are you part of Extinction Rebellion or are you just interested in empathy circles in general or just? The second one for sure. Uh -huh. First, just kind of sitting on the edge of figuring out how I'm going to be involved with whatever I'm going to be involved with. Okay, that cool. That's one of the spokes that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that, this will be good because I'll give you a little explanation of our work group. Maybe you're interested in, you know, joining the, the work group. So I'm going to just give a slideshow. This is a rough slideshow is mentioning uh, about the uh, work group. So this is, you know, the banner. I mean, this is the front page of the work group. Uh, and it's with XR. And the issue we have here is the problem, you know, climate change, climate crisis. It's a global problem that we need to solve together. And we want to overcome the polarization and kind of the different issues with mutual empathy. That's what our work group is, is addressing. And uh, we have, our group has a mandate of building a, an empathic and regenerative culture uh, in XR and beyond. So we're really focusing on sort of the empathic aspect of in, in XR. And uh, the main process we're using is something called an empathy circle, which is a way of uh, 
of using active listening, empathic listening to dialogue with each other. And we're really trying to spread this, uh, uh, spread this practice. It's just a gateway practice. There's a lot of empathy building practices and we're into using all of them, but we've really been focusing on, on this one practice to, to get everyone in XR, Extinction Rebellion, to be able to do this process and to be able to facilitate it and ideally everyone in the world. So get everybody to kind of learn this practice. I think it really helped for kind of addressing a lot of our social uh, problems. I kind of wanted to make the case that uh, empathy is a big part of Extinction Rebellion. You know, these are the, the initial banners uh, that were held up at uh, Extinction Rebellion, the first uh, rallies that they did uh, last year or even the year before. You know, they had big signs, you know, mentioning empathy. Uh, they had, you know, like their tent here, humility, empathy, frugality, and they had these kind of, hand, these, you know, all kinds of different banners that they uh, were, had for around it, you know, nonviolent empathy, uh, you know, humility, empathy, frugality. So these are some values that were, you know, sort of publicly displayed and even you know some big banners here that they put up, and this is in the UK at some of the events. And then here in San Francisco, or in Berkeley, uh, Bill and Christine and I, we've set up the empathy tent in downtown Berkeley. So this is at the subway station, the, we call it the BART, Bay Area Rapid Transit. We had the empathy tent there, we had what we call an empathy, XR empathy cafe, so people could come and, and talk. We would offer listening and uh, empathy circle practices and kind of get the word out about XR, Extinction Rebellion. Uh, the, one of the big aspects of, of, or one of the core principles in XR is regenerative culture, you know, so how do we create a culture that is really kind of healthy and, and uh, productive and supportive? And this is a empathy, I mean, an interview I did with Daniel Wall, who wrote the book on designing regenerative cultures. And we're looking at really, what is the relationship of empathy and regenerative empathy, uh, regenerative cultures and cultures of empathy? And, you know, he, really saw a connection with that. He was saying like, by sharing the new and ancient story of interbeing, you know, we facilitate the emergence of diverse regenerative cultures scale linked by empathy and cooperation. So uh, it's really a core part, I think, of the regenerative culture uh, aspect of, of Extinction Rebellion. And so our work group, uh, we've done a whole bunch of different projects uh, so far and um, want to go through some of those quickly. Uh, the first one is we've been supporting Extinction Rebellion with Empathy Circle Practice as mentioned. This is one of the first calls we did with, the, uh, with this group called uh, the Future Democracy Hub. So they're trying to bring in practices into XR uh, which are for for uh, democracy building practices. They have you go to xrdemocracy.uk and there's a you can see a bunch of tools and we started working with them to create some trainings uh, for them. Uh, so some how to do empathy circle trainings and we did a bunch of a couple of those and so we've been working quite you know extensively with the future democracy hub. And that's, they've been working on how to do uh, people's assemblies, which is one of the demands that, you know, to, to how to do people's assemblies and citizens assemblies. So how do we, people come together, talk about the issue and kind of make a policy out of that. And there's a series of steps for that. Uh, we've been doing empathy cafes around uh, how might Extinction Rebellion more effectively address and mediate conflict. So we've done a series of those. And it's another project. We have a series of cafes that we're doing on how might Extinction Rebellion design and implement empathic direct action. So right now, nonviolent direct action is sort of a, the, the, one of the major means of getting the word out. And we're trying to redesign it to be more about empathic direct action. So it has a large 
aspect of listening and dialogue uh, to it. And so we're holding empathy cafes around that. Uh, we just did a empathy circle with some of the co-founders of XR, Rupert Reed and Shakina Rather. They're, uh, they're pretty well known. They're spokespeople for XR and they do a lot of the TV shows and news shows. And we did this empathy circle with them to talk about a paper that they're presenting uh, on sort of the direction, the vision, and kind of going in a bit of a different direction. So we're going to be doing a series of cafes uh, on that topic as well. So just getting people together to dialogue about these uh, different topics. And we've also been doing the Polish uh, uh, XR empathy uh, work group. Maybe you could just say a few words about that. I've got three slides here, uh, Carolina, that I can show. If you want to just talk a little bit about that, the, the fundraiser, the what you've been doing, just and you're muted. Oh, um, I'm not prepared for, for speaking, but I will try. Uh, so we, we, I launched the first circle, empathy circle in Poland in July uh, of uh, last year. Uh, and we think there we, we are, we having those uh, empathy circle every week, every week, practically every week online. Uh, well, since September, we have every week uh, online uh, empathy circle, the same as we had on Friday in English. Mm, there was also fundraising, and we got lately an empathy tent. Uh, something similar to the tent you can see on this picture. Uh, and uh, we will be participating. So soon I will have the opportunity to say that I am a member of Empathy Tent as well, not just Empathy Circle. <laughs> we are just preparing this tent to, to use it, to some printings uh, on it. Uh, it's not ready yet. It's fresh thing. And uh, we, for example, we have regular training every week on Tuesday. And we also, yeah, Empathyczne Słuchanie i Mówienie. It means empathic listening and speaking training. That's what is written in Polish here. Um, and this is actually the picture from our meeting when we were preparing to the discussion about uh, nuclear energy with next sun, next Saturday, not this, but next Saturday, we, we will have empathy circle on nuclear energy. So it will be something extra mm. organized. Uh, so yeah, that's how it develops. Yeah, thanks. So we're we're trying to get uh, support others in in holding you know empathy circles around the world, so everyone here can facilitate them. And also, if you want to try to support you in getting an empathy tent, we raised a thousand dollars for for the Polish tent. So I was quite uh, proud that we were able to do that. And and also, uh, so um, then. We also are doing this empathy circle support group, facilitator support group, which you're part of right now. That's another project. And yeah, so that's that's kind of like a bit of an overview. Uh, so I don't know, Bill, do you want to say anything about other stuff that we've we've been doing or maybe give add anything to this? You're muted. So oh, it's pretty complete, but for instance, I've been taking the empathy tent to a local farmer's market and just <laughs> offering listening to people. Um, and, uh, and then I've also partnered with Edwin in doing empathy tent and also actions with XR. Yeah, Carolina. And Bill, you are proposing the, uh, to the schools, your project in schools. Correct. Um, I have uh, made a proposition um, called Listening Circles in Schools, which would incorporate the empathic listening process in schools 
and train up students um, to be uh, uh, both supervised by a therapist, but also peer counselors. And James, I think you had your finger up there. Did you? I have a question. Yep. Um, it's just about this, um, the, the working group, it's um, who is in it, when does it meet? I, I, I recognize that it's, it seems to be um, you and um, Bill and Caroline. I'm just curious if that's it, if, 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 if this is it or if, there's, if it's happening somewhere else. Um, I'm trying to get in uh, yeah. a picture, mm -hmm. a bird's eye view of what's yeah. happening. So it's primarily kind of organized by uh, Bill and Carolina and I. We have like 500 and yeah, about 500, maybe 50 people who have you know, liked it, sort of joined it. Uh, they come various degrees of amount of people come to the, ver the various cafes. It's kind of always sort of shifting, but I'd say it's sort of the three of us have been the core. And I would like to kind of expand that, you know, get more people involved, maybe create a more formal uh, holacracy structure where people can take on roles. We've got some different, uh, you know, work groups. And so that's, what I, that's part of what this uh, presentation is about exactly the start beginning to introduce it and then sort of hear questions like that you and anyone has so we can start addressing those questions and then see how we can get maybe a bit more organized and onboard people to you know take on roles i could just follow up um is it that the like this meeting i think was described as the facilitator um working group empathy facilitator working group and and you see that like in a hierarchy un underneath a, a larger branch of all these projects that the empathy, the the, uh, the XR empathy working group is is kind of trying to seed, or do you see it as two separate things? Yeah, it it was sort of a separate things. This was like open anyone. You don't have to be part of XR to be in this group. It's like you know, beyond XR, we're trying to just foster empathy circle practice. So if you're not part of XR and you want to, you know, take part in the empathy circle, you know, practice, that's great because we're really trying to spread it to everyone that wants to do it. But then we recently started working, you know, more with XR. So it's a little, you know, things are overlapping a bit and it's not so hierarchical per se. It's using it's, you kind of create circles and there's sort of overlap with the different circles. So, um, but we are trying to get some more clarity around it. So there is not real sharp clarity and it, it's a bit, you know, amorphous, but it, we had done a lot with uh, bridging political divides, empathy circles around that for, you know, almost a year, but it seemed to sort of fizzle out. It was hard to get the left and the right together. <laughs> to you know, talk with each other, it took a lot of work. And XR is just really embraced this and been hugely supportive. So it seems like a really good you know, group to work with and to team up with and to move this forward. I mean, different groups within XR are supportive. Some are not so supportive, some are very supportive. I so think that Marta is also important per, uh, participant of uh, member of our working group. Yeah, should have mentioned her. So she's, yeah, very yeah, central. We've been starting to do a lot of interviews together. She's a really good organizer, really grounded in empathy skills and, yeah. and really committed. She's working with some circles in Ireland. So with the regen culture there. So there's sort of like circle groups of usually, you know, up to eight people. And then they split into other groups and, and they keep splitting and they have different mandates, different roles. Uh, within those. So uh, you got to get a little overview of kind of how holacracy works. So I'm trying to bring in the holacracy uh, into this, but it's still a lot with the more of the four of us kind of leading, you know, and leading it. So I can just open it up if anybody has questions or comments uh, before Thanks. we... Okay. Oh, you're muted, Grace. Here. Did you mute me? What? Did you mute me? No. Oh, oh. maybe I did. Sorry, I did mute oh. you because you stood up, you went away, and I was hearing noise. So that oh, I muted God. you a little while ago. That's yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess what I'm hearing is like there are two ideas here. One's empathy for the world, 
And then the other is landing platforms. And XR is one of the ones that has really embraced you. And is that right? Exactly, yeah. And then when I heard Bill, you talk about bringing empathy tents to farmers markets and schools, I sort of like got off the floor. I was stretching on the floor and I thought, oh, this feels really like something I would be and am drawn to. Mm -hmm. But first I have to learn how to do it. And then I could see myself being lit like, a, like lighting up this brush fire of all these tents. I'm like the way I feel like I'm being lit up right now with, you know, just learning the, the process of, of empathy listening and then being part of that brush fire. So, yeah, I guess I just wanted to add that. Mm -hmm. So, I guess what I'm hearing there is you just wanted to share that when you heard about empathy kind of in schools and, and sort of in, in the larger culture, that really it was like a brush fire. You could really feel involved and interested in that and it's really kind of it sounds like you were inspired by that and would like to be part of uh, of that yeah i don't know if i would like to be yet but it, it felt like i was really drawn into that mm -hmm. so you heard most of that in just mm -hmm. that little yeah. yeah so it's not like you're ready to commit it's like mm -hmm. hey i am attracted to it but i'm not sure about my level of sort of commitment and yeah yeah, yeah. bill uh -huh. i just want to mention we do have a uh, uh, bob brown uh, in Southern California, he's in Thousand mm -hmm. Oaks, and he has a tent, and he's been taking it out. So uh, you know, you'll you'll decide your own pace ex exactly how you do it. But you know, you could come to some empathy circles, and then you could actually go in if you wanted to in support of him, and then you don't have to you know uh, reinvent the wheel. Yeah, got it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And so. in terms of uh, empathy and education. Uh, Martha and I just interviewed uh, Patrick Dolan, who's an academic in Ireland at the university, and he's working with UNESCO, and he's put together this, they've put together this 12 lesson uh, program for the schools there. So they're starting to implement and test it in the schools. So, you know, we're working with a lot of other people besides XR who are trying to promote empathy. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Yeah, when I hear you and when I see you talk about it and bring up that paper, it's like, I feel that fire again. I feel like, <laughs> this, is, this is the spoke for me. It's kind of exciting to hear you. Yeah, there's a teacher's manual. So they got a teacher's manual too. So if you wanna, you know, I haven't seen the program. I've just seen some of it, but we had a really great connection with the interview. He was gonna be away for a week and we're, I think we, there's really some stuff we can uh, work with him and you know, a lot of others too. You unmuted yourself, Ben. Did you have something you want to say? Or? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I've just been to a meeting so far. And I mean, it was quite interesting to hear about all the things they're getting up to. But like the things that really concern me in the meeting that I went to are kind of like subtle coercion and a kind of like power hierarchy within the within the movement xr um, you're meaning that there's yeah, certain yeah, yeah. power hierarchies e yeah, within yeah. xr e e even within xr there's, there's there's a certain power hierarchy um and i'm kind of concerned that that could lead to you know not everybody being able to use their full potential in um you know sort of bring bring the full capacity to to what they do. Mm -hmm. Can I reflect that, what I was hearing? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so what I was hearing, you went to an XR meeting, not, not like one of the empathy circle meetings, but one of the XR meetings, and you were just noticing sort of power hierarchies there, and you just have, had some concern about that, and that that might not create space for everyone to really be, you know, share their full potential. Yeah, that was a degree of concern for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so real concern. It's kind of strange thing to hear that because it's usually a lot of concern of making everything kind of equal to everyone and uh, struggling, fighting against hierarchy, hierarchy in a in a meeting or in the whole structure. So it's kind of strange. Yeah. Um, I so I hear you saying that it's strange because there's a strong 
impetus to get away with power structures and, and yeah. actually make things equal and and make everybody get along on the same level. Yeah. 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 Well, I would say there's a lot of different groups uh, within XR. They all have their own dynamics. I've seen some of that power structure stuff here in the San Francisco group, had my own kind of issues with it and been trying to, you know, bring empathy practices into uh, into the local XR group. Um, and in terms of learning the practice, Grace, with your, that we just had a empathy cafe. It was about, it started at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and it was about conflict in XR. And that's really where we practice the empathic listening. And then Wednesday, next Wednesday, we have an empathy cafe as well. And that will be at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And um, I think uh, somebody- It's did, not every Wednesday, correct? It's, it's gonna be the next, we're going to be staggering. It would be the next Wednesday is going to be on how do we design empathic direct actions? Like how do, instead of just nonviolent direct actions, empathic. So empathy is at the core of kind of social, you know, street actions. And then the following one will be, uh, what is your vision for XR? So it'll be two different topics, but the next four weeks, we're going to be meeting on Wednesdays. Yeah, at least. I mean, my main concern, like for me at least, like is how to have an influence in these groups. And I'm sure I'll get there eventually. But like, there's a lot, you know, I, 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 I tend to encounter a lot of barriers and resistance when I'm, when I'm coming up against these things because there's a certain way people do things and there's, you know, there's certain precedents and that sort of thing. And, and that can be a real obstacle to, um, you know, something new emerging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really, it sounds like within like XR, the meetings you went to and in groups like that, you're just seeing sort of resistance to something new and just kind of how to, how to navigate that and just seeing that as sort of a yeah. concern. And yeah, 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 that's right. It's a concern for me. Um, it, I've, yeah, I, I really felt quite disheartened that, like, you know, I came with such energy and intensity, and there was no place for that to, to sort of be. Yeah. So, yeah, you bring this energy, enthusiasm, and how do you get that channeled within, within the group? And it didn't seem, sounds like you felt like it was a little blocked. And I would yeah, say that yeah. that is sort of XR that we're, you know, we're the empathy group. So we're trying to bring in empathy practices into XR, which, you know, that most of the groups don't do this empathic listening. So that's part of our job is to bring these practices to XR so that the meetings, for example, could start with empathy circles. So everyone kind of feels heard and included, you know, to begin with, and maybe during the meetings or after. So that's part of our job with with this work group is to sort of spread the practice and so i you're did saying the x xr is basically you know that's what you get and you know what we're trying to do here is like bring empathy into it and so you know maybe start with empathy circles so everybody does mm -hmm. get a chance to get heard exactly yeah and i just want to yeah. put this in for you grace into the uh, that's the uh, email for bob brown ventura empathy tent and if you email me, we can, I can uh, also send you some photos. Or he, he'd be glad to kind of you know, share, and you're welcome to. He, he'd love to have support there. He's yeah. been to like the Women's March. We met him. We had the empathy. We took the empathy tent to L.A. at the impeach Trump rally. We set it up uh, in, in front of the city hall there and, and, and across the street was the right wing, you know, counter protesters. And we invited people from both sides into the empathy tent and did like mediations between the sides. And we did six mediations and each one of them ended with hugs between the two sides. And uh, it's in a documentary, Trump phobia, what both sides fear. So the trailer, if you do a Google search on that, you'll see the trailer and it has the empathy tent in there so um 
So yeah, so uh, that was sort of an initial introduction. This is, was sort of a test to, because we want to create a whole meeting just for this part to introduce, you know, these practice, the, introduce the work group. So I don't want to go on too long with this and get, want to get into our support group uh, part. So is there, if there's any, any other questions about this, and we can, if not, we can move on. Okay. So, Bill, do you want to explain how the support group works, you know, and then kind of facilitate that part if anyone has? How this support group works? Yeah, yeah so. our 15 minutes, yeah. you say whatever you want, you facilitate, et cetera. Oh, you just did it. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> well, what Edwin said. Um, yeah, so this is an area... Um, the empathy circle um, practice is, is a basic practice, and then this is um, like a, form, a forum for people who would like to take it and express it in some way. Uh, it can could be an empathy tent, it could be a cafe, uh, it could be online something or whatever it is. And so then you get 15 minutes to present your idea, ask for specific support or get feedback about it, and... Um, you know, and, and that's basically it. Did I miss anything there, Edwin? I think that's it. We usually have a list. Like I'm looking for, for the page, but if whoever wants to be on the stack, just, you know, raise your hand and I think you're... Mm -hmm. Let me see. Well, I'd like to be on the stack. I'm glad that you can't find your page because I can't find it. I have this problem always. At least once you have problem, Edwin. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to be on the stack too. I know where to look for. I just uh, put it. <laughs> oh, no, so I hit the wrong one. Everybody. So let me. Um... There is no page there. I, I look at the. No, oh, it's somehow, it's not my copying, it's not working. There we go. So that's the page. And I, ju I just like everybody to know all of the takeaways, so I might have to suddenly pop out for like two minutes, like one minute, like at some point, but um, there's that. So if I have to disappear, okay. like, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but... So it sounds like James is first. We're ready to go for that, Bill. To... Yeah. Go ahead, James. Um, all right, I'm just starting my timer for myself. Okay. And so for my time, I'd like to once again um, demo the dialogue process, the empathy dialogue process that I use, which um, incorporates active listening, but, but is, a, um, is a little different. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. We um, um, will join on what we have in common. If we wanna bring in a difference, we'll just ask the group if it's ready to bring in a different topic or a disagreeing topic and um, we'll all listen. And then if you'd like to speak, just paraphrase the person who has uh, spoken before you. So the floor is open. I'll, I'll speak uh, about what we have in common. I think, uh, or Well, so the floor, we're starting from zero. So you can speak about anything. You're not joining anyone because we're just starting. Yeah, so I, I see that uh, what we have in common is this value of empathy that everyone is is uh, kind of curious or interested in or supportive of of uh, how we you know create are more empathic and how do we sp spread this uh, practice. So uh, I, I, I see that as a commonality. I can't remember. What, how, what the phrase was, the, there's a phrase to end. Ah, yes, thank you. When you're done, please say anyone else. Oh, 
Anyone else? So I think I just need some clarity. Um, probably from so, uh, Grace, would you, f would you just start by paraphrasing Edwin? Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, paraphrasing Edwin, thank you. Um, so I think what I'm pretty sure what I heard Edwin say is that what we share here, what we have in common is this, in this group of six is that, or maybe in a larger group, I'm not sure, um, is that we, we all um, prioritize empathy and want to, want to bring that to a larger scale, on a larger scale, if you will. Those aren't your words. Um, I'm sorry, I think that's all I got. Yeah, that's the essence of it. Uh, I feel heard. Okay. And then just clarity, I mean, is this the, James, you said you were going to start this with your, your version of the empathy, but it's going to be a little bit different than the normal empathy circle that you guys use that, that I would be learning. So what we're doing here is a little bit different than what Edwin would be doing in his circle on next Friday or Wednesday or whatever, right? Is that right? The process is slightly different, yes. The process is different. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I feel kind of excited about that. I'm two for one here. <laughs> <laughs> Can I paraphrase? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that, you know, you're sort of getting some clarity about what James is trying to do. And you're sort of getting an impression that he, like, the idea is to, uh, you know, it's an empathy process, but the process is slightly different. And uh, you feel excited about that. I feel what about that? Excited. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I feel quite a lot of um, optimism about what James is bringing into the group. Um, and uh, um, and and I also. Um, I feel extremely contained. I feel like I'm containing a lot of energy. So if anybody would like to paraphrase that. I... Yeah, Ben, I'll paraphrase you. I heard that you said you're excited about what I'm bringing into the group and that you feel that you are containing a lot of energy. Um, inside of yourself yeah that's right okay um i um i'm really grateful to re for the receptivity to um trying something a little different did it last week it went well i was really happy to have uh, been welcomed in that way and then I had an opportunity in another group to do to demo this process for 90 minutes and it went really well. And so I'm just feeling very um, good about that. I've got some more plans to do some uh, some of some to do this um, locally on Monday and maybe weekly. So um, yeah, it's um, Partially something I've wanted to do for a long time, partially being motivated, seeing and participating recently with Edwin and company. So, so I just, I, I feel grateful. Thank you. Anyone else? Sure, I'll speak. So um, I heard that you are appreciative that um, your, you know, your own version of this is being accepted and, and demoed. Um, you've had a few uh, last week in this group, you did it and you felt that went well. Um, and then also you've had the chance to do it in others, um, uh, locally in other circles and there might be an ongoing thing. So you're excited about the process and you're, um, you're feeling really good about people, you know, trying it and supporting and, you know, helping you beta test it. Yes. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Um, yeah. And I just have to, uh, add that um, that's what empathy is about. Um, you know, 
um, there's a word that comes out to me is called ineffable. Um, that's, you know, it, it kind of um, evades a, comp a, a reductionist uh, uh, definition. And it's expansive to me. Empathy is expansive and it's a feeling. And it's really nice when uh, people can change the form somewhat, but keep the uh, basic core value um, and uh, nobody explodes. <laughs> I'm done. Anyone else? I'm sorry. So what I'm hearing is that you are appreciating the the, the method of you kind of see something like integral in em empathy mm. that is uh, you know like it doesn't sort of matter what format exactly, but if we're connecting with empathy, then like we're um, you know that that's the important thing. Thanks. I feel hurt. Thanks. Cool. Um, I feel suspicious about James's motivation in this group. <laughs> And I feel suspicious about him introducing this method in into the group. Um, you know, who knows? Who knows quite what he's up to. So, Ben, let me just stop you there. This is yeah. a great example of what I would call bringing in a difference. So, the one of the differences in this process is that rather than just bringing in a difference, we we just ask the group if it's ready to hear a difference. And yeah. So, would you like to do that? So is the, group ready, is the group ready to hear a difference? Yeah, it seems like it. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, yeah, I've sort of talked about some suspicion about James and his methods. Uh, um, and I, I think I've pretty much expressed myself fully. A anyone else? I'll go. Uh, yeah, so you're feeling some suspicion with James. He's bringing sort of a new process in, in here, a new, or, or even, even in general, you're just feeling some suspicion about what his motivations and intentions are. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you, I feel hurt, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah, for me, what uh, I, I I see empathy circles. Uh, what we do is sort of a foundational practice. You know, it's just like one way of practicing empathic listening. And it's something that I like to see really spread widely because I think that it's a really foundational practice, but there's so many other practices that we can add. And I see this as another one of instead of turn taking that, you know, you can just throw it out there and people respond. Uh, so I, I'm quite appreciative of the the you know the attempt of creativity and innovation so let me just in, in, interrupt there again so actually edwin you would be flipping back to to my subgroup again and if and if you want to if you want to join with ben you'd have to check in and see if there's a part of you that can that can join on the skepticism or the um um, maybe the suspicion of me or of difference, um, or, or you could do what Ben oh. did and, and, and ask if, if the group was ready for another difference. But, but, it's, but, but the, the, the idea of that is to just that we have an awareness of, of um, where we're joining or where we're bringing in difference. I see. So it's like uh, I was sort of, we were on, on the difference and for me to stay within that, uh, same similarity of the diff of what Ben was saying, and then I would have to request a, a shift. Uh, so, and then I guess I would say I'm ready. I, I'm for a shift, and then ask for confirmation from everyone. And then if somebody yeah, says yeah. no, then what happens? Well, if I'm, if some yeah someone says no, then we would we would allow that subgroup to work and, until they're done. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I mean, I think this stuff comes out as it, as it goes along. That's, that's my impression of it to some degree, but sorry. So, oh, so hold on. So I, I would say that, that, that it's still in your um, hands, Edwin, it depends on what you want to do. Is everybody okay with that shift? Just to... Yes. Yeah. And I would okay. like to reflect back, Edward, what I heard you say. Okay. Which is that 
to you to use circles are a foundation uh, they're foundational and that there are layers that that you can take them outside of of just the one that you created and that there's an appreciation with the way james has you know brought his process in <clears throat> um is that right yep that's it i feel heard and i want to just can i i don't know if i can do this but i want to go back to something because I, I'm trying to drop this, but I, I can't drop it. It's, it's wanting to speak to Bill. Would this be the time to do that? Just um, do what you think is best. Try it and, and we'll see what happens. Right. It's just like, there's this, there's this thing that I, I'm trying to put down. It just stays. And it, it's a response to something Bill talked about, which was this ineffable feeling of expansion with, taking processes and, and going off off circuit with them and um i think it kind of links in with both um, ben and, and edwin's moving off um james because of your process being different than what this other process is so i i guess i just have an appreciation for bill for for using that word and and seeing that that to me the the word uh i i don't know it just felt like he was, he really he really appreciated the expansion, and then also appreciating the other um, people who 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 also see the possibility for the expansion. So I think I did that wrong. Um, I don't think you did it wrong. Um, I do notice that we have about a minute and a half. I have about a minute and a half left, and um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just save this last minute for something in this process we call surprises and learnings. It's just a way of like wrapping up uh, an empathy session. And it's just, uh, you, you don't have to paraphrase, but you can just bring in something. You bring in a surprise or learning, a satisfaction, a dissatisfaction, um, a discovery or a next step. So if anybody has just, it's just really quick, if somebody has anything like that to um, kind of reflect on what we did, a surprise, a learning, a satisfaction, a dissatisfaction, discovery, or a next step in the last like 45 seconds. Well, just to go on, I, I, I'm, I'm really uh, happy about um, going beyond our borders in a way and in, in embracing, you know, growth and, and new experiences. So that's my learning. Edwin. It did seem that for me, there's a sort of a, an awareness of a convergence of this quality of expansion, kind of openness, expansion as a theme that we were on. And then another theme that was forming, which was suspicion, and that we could kind of converge on that suspicion. So I kind of, I don't know if I'm getting some insights, but something about, about that within this process. Carol, Carolina? And this will be our last one. Method looks interesting, but uh, it's very exclusive method. It's kind of promoting people with certain character, personality, and people who are not easy to speak will not will not speaking at all. Is that a dissatisfaction? Very, yes, this is the satisfaction mm -hmm. because. That's how I see it. It's not promoting people of different characters. It promotes alpha male personality. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, on that note, we'll end. Thank you, everybody. So James was the only one on the stack. Who is someone else? Want to? No. Yeah, I'd like to be on the stack. Okay. Um, so do I get fifteen minutes? Then? Yeah, you get fifteen minutes. Okay. So I don't know if it'll take a full fifteen minutes, but what I'd really like to do is reflect, like, have you know, talk about my recent experience with uh, XR, and have some reflection from somebody that I choose. How does that sound for everybody? Good, it's, it's whatever okay. you want.
Mm-hmm. Uh, I just want to remind you that we are recording this. Are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm aware of that. Yeah. Um, so I went to this XR meeting on Monday and I, um, I encountered some difficulties in terms of how people were in, in terms of the structure and the format and in terms of how people were relating to me. Um, Bill, could you, reflect, could you reflect that? So you went to an XR meeting and then you had some difficulties and I wasn't quite sure about the details, but it seemed to be some uh, poor communication. Yeah, that's right. I kind of found it to be quite um, like authoritarian and slightly oppressive in structure. Um, like there was two women leading the group and one of the women, an older woman, seemed fairly okay with me, but a younger woman seemed to have some big problems with me bringing very forceful energy into the group. Um, the words like aggression, like there was a slight discretion into some of the problems with like, you know, aggression and that sort of thing. Um, and I kind of sort of took that slightly personally. Could, could you reflect again? Yeah. Sure, absolutely, just wanna make sure. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so you went to an XR meeting, there were two women who were leading it. You felt it was somewhat authoritarian. Um, the older woman seemed to be much more accepting of you, but the younger woman um, interpreted your you know, forceful energy as aggression and you, you didn't really feel heard or you know, accepted by her. That's right. There were quite a few guys in the group. There was one guy sat opposite me and one guy sat next to me who seemed particularly interested in what I had to say. But um, I didn't really get a chance to, to say those things because the people running the group had a certain degree of influence over the group. So I, I, I didn't really get a chance to, 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 to really come out with it. Okay. So you didn't feel heard because of the structure of, and the way they ran the group. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, I felt incredibly suspicious about some of the things that were going on there, like some of the ways that they related to me. Um, like I, you know, I said something about, you know, I said, to, I said to this one woman, you know, I'd be interested in introducing empathy circles. And as I was speaking to her, I kind of got the impression like, you know, she was saying like, well, you know, okay, well, maybe like, you know, like, like sort of like, you know, well, maybe there's possibility that they're suggesting all sorts of other projects I could get involved with. Um, and it was really frustrating because, um, I have a certain idea about some, you know, the kind of project I want to run. Okay. Um, so um, you wanted to talk about and bring in empathy circles, but you felt that the, uh, the moderator of the group or the facilitator kind of um, diverted and co-opted you and said, well, you could do this and this uh, more towards what the group's agenda was. And they weren't listening to you about how you like to create something and bring it in and add it. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. Um, I mean, when I started the circle in the first place, I, I did say, that you know, when I can, I can tend to bring in a bit of energy that can be very forceful and incredibly effective. And the effectiveness can scare people sometimes because you know, if people have got quite you know comfortable, happy lives, like you know, it, it, it can it can stir up change, and that can yeah. um, you know, people don't always appreciate that because um, they find it scary. And in those cases, people have a tendency to attempt to reduce my power. Um, you know, re- mitigate the influence that I can have. Okay. So you're feeling, for what you experience internally, I believe, it's more of like an intensity and a passion. And others can feel um, somewhat that it's more, it's interpreted by them as aggression. And then they're sort of off put and they don't really, um, they're acting in a defensive and threatened way and try to kind of um, not accept what you're saying at, you know, at face value. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was my experience. Um, Yeah, Um, 
I feel completely hurt, so I'm not sure what to do the rest of these 15 minutes. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, I've been experiencing quite a lot of that recently, and, and I'm, I'm uh, experiencing an extreme struggle to maintain a sense of like, harmony and at the same time not lose touch with my inner sort of like, energy and how, how I feel about things. Okay. So you're really struggling to, um, I mean, you feel very strongly, it feels to me, that you believe in the goals of XR and, and you'd like to be part of the group. But on the other hand, you can't feel that you can really join if you don't feel accepted for who you are. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I believe in the goals of empathy. And to me, XR is, is a perfectly reasonable expression for that. You know, it's a perfectly reasonable way mm -hmm. to, to do that. Okay, so you were focusing on empathy and you feel that um, expressing empathy through the XR movement is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Yeah, and there's a real question for me and it's three things. Stature, stature is one thing, right? Mm -hmm. How seriously people take you, you know, do mm -hmm. you get a fucking position on the stage, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, do, 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 do you get to stand up in front of everybody and you know, give a talk, or are you the one listening to the talk? That's one thing, stature. And the next yeah. thing is vulnerability, because it seems like a lot of the time, if you allow yourself to be vulnerable, that can, you know, if you're too vulnerable, it can easily reduce your sense of stature, and people won't take you so seriously. You know, like, you know, yeah. it's, if, I mean, if you're not quick, like, it's very easy for people to, well, in whatever way, to, to reduce you. And, I mean, yeah. Well, that, that's the, that's the main issue: stature and vulnerability. And I'd kind of like I kind of like to hear from other people in the group right now how they see the interplay between those two things, between stature and vulnerability, because it kind of seems like one goes without the other. It kind of seems like you either get you either get one or you get the other. Yeah. Edward. Well, I'll comment on it. I think that's, uh, you know, I, I've been to the XR groups where in Bill and I've been to the local groups and we just didn't feel heard and really accepted. Sort of kind of what you're saying. And what we're trying to do is bring in some of these empathy practices. So everyone feels heard and accepted. That's uh, that, that it's kind of structurally creating a, like the empathy circle structure so people at the beginning can be heard. So you don't have to have any stature. You don't, it, you can be as vulnerable or have as little as, or whatever stature, but that we all just get together and everyone, kind of like we're doing here, you know, everybody has their time and they get heard to their satisfaction as a way of just creating that connection. So that's just what comes up for me. Yeah. So what you're saying is that with these empathy circles, everybody gets a chance to be heard and everybody gets a chance to like say their own truth and there's no stature and there's no, you know, there's no hierarchy or anything like that. Less, um, yeah. Yeah. I value that too. And that does remind me of the third thing and it's, it's subtle influence and subtle coercion. And, um, you know, I kind of find that, you know, in groups where, even where there is like a sense of equality, there's also, you know, some people do tend to have more power than other people. And I think that does have a lot to do with their level of receptivity. Um, yeah, could someone reflect that? No? I'll try. So the third thing that's important to you or that you notice in the meetings is this subtle influence and that um, do you have it? Who has it? And along with that, there's, there's a, a there's sort of a power, um, power element that comes with that. Yes. Thank you. I just have to go and get the door. So I'll, I'll, I'll end my turn here, but like, thank you very much everyone. Um, Okay. 
So as soon as we're done, we're done. If there's nobody else that we're, we're kind of complete. So Bill or Carolina or Grace, it, you're... Well, I can only report what's happening. Maybe a little okay. bit. Cool. So Ben and is Ben is done or how we understand that? Yeah, Ben said he was done. Okay. So I just want to say that um, uh, again we had quite a good empathy circle, Polish empathy circle on Tuesday. Uh, next, uh, uh, next. The week I have a lot of empathy circles because we have two English empathy circles and I have another empathy circles with the open region calls with IST region. And probably I will be organizing empathy circles for uh, IST members restricted only to members of IST, uh, International Support Team, because there is idea to create a community of those, uh, those group. And I suggested that we have to find some practices, online practices we can cultivate. So we create sort of community because there is such need. People sign out uh, that they need Feel, they sign out some kind of symptoms of burnout and other um, symptoms of kind of stress, tension. So we think that we need to create some regenerative practice within the IST. And I suggested that suggested that empathy circle might be good practice. So probably I will be do also regular empathy circle just for IST members. Uh, we started this project of empathy direct action. I send you copy to of email. It already went to the events and gathering group. I'm waiting for their response to that. We will see what they will respond. I have also contact, personal contact with some members of this group, so I hope they will respond. They will not ignore us. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes when you just send email, it means nothing to, 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 to somebody, to receiver. Uh, I hope that they will read it and respond. And yeah, that's more or less everything. I'm tired with our weather because this weather is so unpredictable that I can't find a good day for trying the empathy tan. It's really annoying because there is one hour or half an hour of sun and then it's raining or something. It's horrible weather here. It's winter. It should be snowing, but it's not. There is no snow this year at all. Uh, so I don't know, uh, maybe this weekend there will be a moment of good, good weather. So I will finally set up the tent. I hope so, because I want to make printing because it's almost end of, yeah, it's the end of February. I need to make printings on this. So yeah, that's more or less from me report. Any questions or something? I would comment. I'm just excited to see your tent when you get it up there, a little yeah. video. We've got yeah. the, all the people yeah. in the fundraising yeah. group would like to post that, you know, yeah. kind of let them know what's happening. So yeah, yeah. I hope I hope I, this weekend. I hope I will do the tomorrow or, or on Sunday. I just want to say I'm excited about it. And if there's anything I can do to support you, let me know. Oh, well, I have to do it by myself with 
recording. I have to film it. We will see. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at the tent. He's, okay. It's here. <laughs> Can you show it to us? I don't think everybody's seen it. So. Well, it's, it, you know, it's big. I don't know if you can see it. there is a black, black thing here. It's a bag with tent. Uh, well, I, I hope this weekend I will manage to do that. I hope the weather will be finally good enough. Yeah. I have plan, I have place, I wanted to do that. I check the place. So everything is prepared, but I'm just waiting for a good moment. Because I think I need two, maybe three hours of safe weather. Because I don't know how it will work, you know? So I need some safe time. Yeah. That's it from me. Okay. Did do you have something, Bill, or did you? Um, well, I, I, you know, mainly what's been working me around this is the empathic direct action, but I think maybe wait for you know Wednesday to. Uh, oh yeah. To to do that. So I'm good. Okay, then I think we can close, right? Or that's the. But uh, do we see each other on Monday? We see each other on Monday. Uh, for yeah, for the uh, visioning. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Group with uh, Lou. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So we're on track for that. Then we have Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then we got the the Friday that we'll meet here again Friday, and then the for around conflict uh, before this meeting XR conflict. Yeah, so. yeah. And I have another thing on Saturday with nuclear energy in Polish, obviously. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of empathy circles next to me. <laughs> I did three interviews on empathy uh, this week. Just finished an empathy circle with uh, some book authors, uh, three book authors on empathy. It was, uh, oops. Well, those are the books on empathy, a history, empathy in museums, and uh, Rosa. Oh, with, yeah, I so, remember. So I just did that before here, so. Doing a lot. Yeah, so. I saw the video with Rosa. I didn't have time to listen to the whole video, but just just noticed the the the, the video with Rosa. Yeah, yeah, so I'll be posting those shortly. Okay, well that's it. Um, I think we're closing. Hope you can join us next week, Grace. Think about it, mm -hmm. and if you have some projects you like to try out, you know, you get your fifteen minutes to share your ideas or. Even if it's just the germinating uh, a project, you know, an empathy circle project, you can come just even share the the ideas, and you know, we're here to support you and moving forward. And I did post put the you know uh, um, Bob's email oh, there yeah. if you're interested in connecting with him. Yeah, thank you, thank you, everybody. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks. Okay, thanks everyone. Goodbye. Bye. 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 -bye.